بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and a very good morning to everyone it's uh, ten ten three سيد حميد قضاء representative of uh, political parties from abroad we have been invited to attend the uh, Amno General Assembly. <laughs> Members of the Amno Club abroad. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, Amno for inviting me to speak at this first forum that is being held by AMU, something that was not done during my time or before my time. This is a very good sign, but choosing me as a speaker, of course, is uh, placed me in a very difficult position because I am both inside and outside now. And when you see things from inside, you find that it is quite different after you have gone out. <laughs> they look quite different. And you find that some things that you see inside are really not as good after you have been outside. So uh, I cannot say that I'll be able to satisfy everyone. Uh, some people may not like what I say. <clears throat> but I hope you will be tolerant enough to hear me through. Now the subject that has been chosen for me to speak is entitled The Creation of a Global Citizen, Media Liberalization and the New Political Realities. Actually there are three subjects that I must cover. So I may have to take a little bit of time First, there is this idea of a global citizen. I suppose with globalization, we should have global citizen. Then there is media liberalization, which presumes, of course, that before there was no, the, the media was not allowed to be liberal. Then there is this new political reality. I will take one subject at a time and I will begin with global citizen. Now we have, we are going to have, or we have been having a global citizen simply because today somebody has decided that this world should be regarded as just one unit, not made up of too many of the many uh, countries, but actually all the countries should be amalgamated, the borders should be removed, and people would regard themselves as citizens of this globe, hence a global citizen. Now this idea about globalization came about because of the advances made in technology. Today, you can talk here and be heard in New York, exactly at the same time, practically at the same time. You can even see somebody on the other side of the world speaking, as if he's speaking to you. You can hear him. And we can also travel between places in this world and there is no place in this world that is not accessible in a period of 24 hours of just one day. Of course in the past we would take a long time to travel. After we learn how to sail, sailing from one place to another would take months or even years. But now Travel is so fast 
by jet planes then we can cover the distance from Malaysia to London in just about 12 hours from Kunming in southern China to Malaysia in three hours where before the Japanese, the Chinese junks used to take six months to a year to reach. So obviously we have become very close together, almost as if we are living in a village. Uh, this was realized by a lot of people, but the idea of globalization, as usual, comes from the developed countries. Now, the developed countries conceive a world without border. Now, why, why did they do this? Because they see benefit. Obviously, when they uh, uh, interpret something, it must be something that is beneficial to them. And they see only the parts that are beneficial to them. If we have a globalized world with no borders, then of course movements of people and money would be unrestricted. People can move around, particularly capital can move around. And technology can move around. Investors can move around. This is what they saw because they were among the first to conceive the idea of a globalized world, a borderless world. They think of the things that will be beneficial to them. As you know, we live in a Eurocentric world, and most of the ideas come from them, from the developed countries, and we accept them. <coughs> I think that we should not always accept interpretations made by other people. <coughs> we should try to make our own interpretation suitable for ourselves and our country. Why should it be that in a globalized world, capital can move freely throughout the world? Technology can move freely. Throughout the world. People with capital could invest anywhere in the world without restriction. Goods can flow across borders without any taxes or other uh, uh, obstructions uh, in order to protect the economies of certain countries. That is the interpretation. But if we look at the assets, of the poor countries, they do not have the capital, they do not have the technology, they do not have investors who wish to go abroad to invest, but they do have a lot of people. And these people would like also to take advantage of globalization. They would like to move. The poor people of the poor countries would like to move to the uh, country, other countries in the world. But of course, when we talk about globalization, they say, no, no, no. Only capitalists with their investor, investments can move across borders. Not ordinary people. Ordinary people should be restricted. But if you say there is a borderless world, ordinary people also should be allowed to cross borders and go to live where life would be much easier for them. These are hard-working people and they can provide good uh, and cheap labor to many of the developed countries. So we should allow them. And we should not restrict them. We should not say, just as we do, we do not say that capital moving into a country should be limited to a certain amount only. Uh, any amount of capital should come. Malaysia would welcome trillions of dollars of investment, for example, that we have no restriction. So in the case of the movements of people, it should not be restricted to people with money who wish to invest, or people uh, who have some talents uh, who would be useful to the host country. 
That is happening today. Uh, but it should be available to everyone. Now, supposing we look at the world today, we'll see some countries which are poor, with a big population, we have countries which are small, but with a very high per capita income. Obviously, they have done very well. And I think in globalization, uh, there should be a willingness to accept people to cross borders wherever they want to go. So supposing we have, uh, China is overpopulated, 1.3 billion people. India is overpopulated, 1.2 billion people. Even Indonesia has got a very big population. And they have a lot of poor people also. A lot of people, although China is today regarded as a very uh, strong economy, but on the basis of per capita, I don't like this per capita thing, but I will still mention it. Uh, you know, per capita is actually average, average earning. And I always tell people that if you have one millionaire among 1,000 people, who are unemployed, the per capita income of every one of the 1,000 people is $1,000. Actually, the unemployed one has not a single cent, but that's average. You can also drown in a river that is only two feet deep. Average, two feet deep. So per capita is an average, please remember that. But uh, we, we will still make use of it for example, a Chinese per capita is very, very small, even less than Malaysia. Uh, of course, the developed countries have per capita of 36,000 US dollars. So there are a lot of poor people in China, in India, in Indonesia. Why not redistribute people? Because we have a borderless world, we have a globalized world. Redistribute people, say, uh, 150 million Chinese and 100 million Indians and uh, 20 million Indonesians should be allowed to migrate across the borders which are no longer there to Europe and to America. <laughs> Their interpretation is about their money because they have plenty of money and they want to invest somewhere. And having borders makes it difficult for them to invest. Our capital, the poor country's capital, are their people. And if there is a borderless world, then we export the people. Imagine what Europe would be like with uh, maybe 200 or 300 million Chinese and Indians in the cities in a borderless world. Mr. Sarkozy might not approve of this because he couldn't even tolerate people from the European Union. He wants to expel the gypsies, the Romanian people. And I think Germany is not happy about having too many Turks there. But they have every right to be there. Not only should they be there, they should bring their families, their relations, their friends and all that to go to a place where they can make a better living in a borderless world, in a globalized world. That should be the interpretation of the poor countries. But why is it that whenever there is a new idea, the interpretation comes only from the people who are already well off. And those who are not well off, those who have other interests, are not allowed to interpret.